I'm Monica Mangan, and I believe that with enough creativity, your home can become exactly what you need it to be. Life is ever-changing, and sometimes our homes need to change along with it. Simple projects and a little ingenuity can have a big impact. Let's see what our homes can become. As a mom of four, I know the struggle of getting kids off of screens and playing outside. So many of you have left me comments recently asking for help with ideas to create an outdoor play space for your kids so that they can get off those screens and get outside. I kind of feel like kids today aren't quite as creative as we were when we were little. Do you agree? And now I'm pretty sure I sound exactly like my parents. You know, the whole uphill both ways. <laughs> this week, I am gonna help you guys turn an area of your backyard into an outdoor playroom that will inspire all kinds of imagination and creative play. By the end of it, you just might wish you were a kid too. Getting your hands dirty and making mud pies is like a childhood rite of passage. Well, today we're leveling up our childhoods with an awesome mud kitchen build. A mud kitchen is exactly like it sounds. It's an outdoor kids play kitchen where mud pies are always the recipe of the day. I am going to be building off of this privacy fence. The first step I need to do is to add an additional two by four to the back of the privacy fence. I want the countertop height to be around 27, 28 inches. Now that I have a support board on the back, I'm gonna install another two by four onto the front. This is gonna be a true ledger board and hold up my countertop. This is a project panel and it's gonna be my countertop. But for the front here, I have a couple leftover posts from when we put in the fence and I'm gonna cut those down to size and use them as nice, strong, supportive legs. We have a nice, secure, level countertop, and now comes the fun part. We get to plan out what we want this layout of a kitchen to be, and thankfully a mud kitchen is significantly easier than designing a real kitchen. I'm gonna be using plastic bins for a sink, but you really could get creative with this. You could use metal bowls, you could use an actual small little sink, it's really up to you. One important thing when choosing what container you're gonna use for your sink is you wanna make sure that it has a bit of a lip. This way, I can create a hole in my countertop and it's gonna sit down in it. First, I'm using my drill with a larger bit on it to create a hole so I can drop my saw down in. Now I wanna just double check to make sure that it fits in nice and snug, and it does. It's the cutest mud sink you ever did see. <laughs> Another area that I want to kind of quasi built in is our little stove top here. And for this, all I'm gonna do is drill down in through my counter so it can kind of sit flush. Just like that, ah, oh, so cute. The fun part comes in when you're adding all the pots and pans and little accessories that you plan to use. And whatever you have is kind of gonna determine the storage you need. So I'm gonna show you what I've gathered up. It's a combination of old pots and pans and things I don't use anymore, and then some really inexpensive things that I picked up at the store that I knew would hold up outside. My plan for storage is to add one long shelf, about 40 inches here, and then at Lowe's, I picked up this wire rack and a few of these just little key rings. And I'm actually gonna put a lower shelf in as well. This is a great example of how just adding some molding and one by can make this look so much more beefy and finished. Now it's time to pretty this kitchen up. Right now, it kind of looks like mud. We can do so much better than that. I'm gonna use all heavy duty exterior paint products so that it can stand up to weather and also all the mud. <laughs> As a parent, I know that having a place for your kids to put their things away increases the likelihood that they might actually clean up. So underneath the mud kitchen, I've added a shelf and I'm adding some waterproof storage. This way, when the kitchen's not in use, everything can be packed up into these bins, sealed, and then kept there. Only thing I need to do is but you can't guess, change the color. I wanna hit this with some outdoor spray paint. The black is just a little too strong for all the playful kind of primary colors we have going on. It'll just look cute in our mud kitchen, basically. I have done a good bit of chainsawing in my life, so I'm comfortable using it. Please don't use one unless you have been taught to use one and are really comfortable with it. 
As you can tell, we have a pretty serious wood pile. We have a wood burning fireplace, it's how we heat our home. But I thought it would be really fun to slice down a few of our stumps into kind of little stepping stones. Alone, I think the wood is beautiful, but because this is all about a fun, really playful kids area, we're actually gonna paint each one different bright colors. One of my favorite parts of this series so far has been all the different color palettes we've been able to have fun with. I am so excited about this super bold primary color palette, but I also absolutely am obsessed with the rainbow that we used in the home office. And then I love all the colors that we spray painted the books. If you have a color you're dying to see or a favorite, leave me a comment, let me know. Maybe I can work it in. These are all coated, they look great, they're super fun and vibrant, but I have a second project, <laughs> double peace sign, second project for you guys, using all the same paint supplies. I am going to make an outdoor pennant banner. This is just gonna be a really simple, easy project using something that I already had on hand that's gonna add a pop of color to the entire fenced area. My actual pennant banner is gonna be made out of this drop cloth and, oh snap! Don't wear a black t-shirt when you do this project. Holy cow, how did that even happen? I want the pennants to attach onto the rope. First thing you need to do is fold over your drop cloth wide enough that will accommodate your template. What I have here is just a piece of computer paper that I drew a triangle on and cut out. We're gonna cut one side and make two. Kind of like in elementary school when you used to make hearts for kids that you liked and you would fold it in half and cut out one side and you have both, that's what we wanna do. When we are painting these, we want them open into the diamond shape. And I am gonna paint both sides of them just in case when it's on the pennant banner, if it ever flaps in the wind or anything, you wouldn't want an unpainted underside. So you're just gonna give this a really good coat of exterior paint again. This is something you could get your kids involved with too. You don't have to build this whole play area on your own unless kinda you're surprising them with it. All of my pennants have dried and I'm ready to start putting them on my piece of rope. What I'm using here is a hot glue gun. I'm using a pretty heavy duty rope. Um, you can use what you have, but just make sure it's something that will hold up if you're gonna use this outdoors. I'm gonna leave maybe two feet of my rope without anything on it so that I have plenty of space to like tie it onto a post or attach it to wherever it's gonna go. It's a super fun, high impact project that you can do with materials that you likely already had most of at home. And it's gonna look awesome as kind of some outdoor decor. Can't wait to get it up. Any good mud chef knows that you need access to fresh produce to make the best mud pies. So we're gonna build a little farmer's market right next to our outdoor mud kitchen. It's gonna be awesome. Like our kitchen, I'm gonna be working right off of the privacy fence. I'm gonna get started with our food storage. I picked up these wire baskets at Lowe's. They're really, really cute. And what I wanna do with these is actually add little chalkboard wood labels on them so the kids can swap it out. I think that anything with a label is infinitely cuter. So I'm gonna cut down some one by three wood, add a little chalkboard paint to it. And to attach this, I'm just gonna use a staple gun that can straddle right over and attach it. Pretty dang easy and now I'm gonna write it's a very reasonable farmer's market. Even though I'm building my mud kitchen and our farmer's market onto the privacy fence, I want it to feel almost like a standalone. And the way I'm kind of going to trick us into feeling that way is by building an awning. So if your kids complain that you didn't buy them a massive playhouse, just tell them, I built you an awning. It works every time. <laughs> I've cut down some one by material I have a couple of my one bys that I cut at an angle. I did a 31 degree and a 60 degree angle. And I'm gonna start off by basically attaching all these pieces together. All right, so now I have the frame for my awning. And still, it doesn't look like much, I understand that, but just you wait. The power of a plaid picnic cloth. <laughs> what is it called? Picnic cloth? Picnic, picnic tablecloth. This process is kind of going to be like wrapping a present and I don't know if you know this about me but I wrap some pretty epic presents. 
And this is where it's like wrapping a present. I'm just kind of figuring out how it's gonna look nice and smooth. All right, I have extra fabric here. So I'm gonna cut this off and I will tuck it up and under. A little more trimming to do with my excess. So I wanna make sure I am stapled really well on this inside where no one's gonna see it. Dun, da, da. An awning. Super cute, looks adorable. Now I just need to attach this back piece at the top here where I know that support piece is in the back so it's kind of like going into studs. Even though this is an outdoor tablecloth and intended to kind of handle the elements, I'm gonna add an extra layer of protection. I'm gonna use this Scotch Guard. It's basically waterproofs it a bit more and prevents it from fading in the sun. Technically, could have sprayed this before attaching it. You might want to but I don't always remember to do everything that way. <laughs> now my next step is going to be adding hooks to attach my actual farmer's market baskets that we already made. Since we're friends, I'm sharing all of my best tips with you. I wanna make a sign for our farmer's market, but I don't want it to look like it's in my handwriting or I'll never love it. What I did is just print it out, farmer's market, really large, and now I'm gonna show you how I transfer it. So I'm just gonna cut it into strips. And what I have here is just a ballpoint pen. Not like the inky kind that I actually like to write with. A ballpoint works better because it's a little bit harder. And what I'm gonna do is just trace the letters really pressing down hard. Because this is pine, it's gonna leave me an indent on the other side. When you lift it, you guys can see it says farm. So that's where I will use my chalk pen and fill it in. Oh my goodness. So much better than I ever could have freehanded it. My final project is one I'm super excited about because it kind of ties together our mud kitchen, our farmer's market, and then also just really encourages creativity. What we're gonna create is an outdoor art canvas. And you know, you've seen a lot of people, even I have made outdoor chalkboards and they're really fun and great. But I love when my kids go beyond just chalk. I love seeing them paint, but I love it even more when they do it outdoors. <laughs> so what we're actually gonna create is a canvas out of plexiglass. What I'm thinking is that it could be a menu for the mud kitchen, it can be a price list for the farmer's market, or just right here in the middle, an awesome area to create some art. What you wanna do is put on a drill bit, and put your bit in reverse. This is the trick. And I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of wood under the corners. If you go in reverse and drill through, it will not crack and it'll give you a hole so you can nicely attach it. I do wanna give it a little bit more definition. So I'm gonna attach a couple pieces of pre-painted one by here to the top and the bottom. It'll kind of give it a little bit more of a sign or menu vibe as well. That's really all there is to that build. It's so simple. I'm gonna add some hooks and a little bit of storage and a few more things, but before I get to that, I have a couple parenting tips for you. Dry erase markers work really well on plexiglass and they erase off best with the type of eraser intended for one. It makes a huge difference than just a rag, so I recommend that. My other biggest tip is that painting outside is awesome. If you haven't had your kids do it yet, it's super, super fun. My little tip is to add a tiny bit of dish detergent into each thing of paint, and then it will really help it come off much easier. The next like line of defense is to purchase a little squeegee. It's kind of like your shower squeegee. It wipes off really, really nicely. Guys, hands down, this is my favorite makeover of this entire series. I am so glad so many of you wrote in and said you needed help with a kid's outdoor space. And honestly, I just keep thinking how much I would have loved this as a little kid. The farmer's market, a place to do art outdoors, the mud kitchen. I hope this inspires you to create something awesome and creative outdoors for your little ones. I would love to hear about what your plans are. I also am still looking for more spaces and more ideas that you guys need help with. And I promise you, I'm reading each and every comment. 
And lastly, you know what to do. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a single makeover. Thanks, friends.